let me start by saying that this story I'm about to share with you was told to me by my auntie Nessa. Nessie, as we called her, grew up in Rogers, Louisiana. She didn't graduate from high school, but she did manage to start her own business, a bar room. She ran that bar room for 25 years, day and night, hanging out, smoking, and drinking. And it was that damn bar room that would cost my Aunt Nessa everything. Her health, her marriage, and eventually her life. By the time she was 65, Nessa had been diagnosed with cancer. Cancer forced her to sell her bar room and start taking chemotherapy. Now, now the day she shared this story with me was one of her good days. And even though her voice was raspy and she looked weak and frail, she still had light in her eyes. This is the story of her dogman encounters. And back then, I had never even heard of dogman. But she called it the Rougarou. And her encounters started off extremely strange. Let me explain. This particular day, Aunt Nessa was feeling great, so she went out into the backyard. Aunt Nessa had this lawn man and handyman named George that would take care of things around the property cutting grass, chopping down bushes, maintaining her fences, right? Now this particular day she's out in the yard talking to George when he tells her about these huge holes he's found dug on the back side of her property. Now, George described it just like this. He said, Nessa, it looks like Clifford the dog has been on the back side of your property digging holes. I've never seen a hole that big dug in the ground by an animal, but it's clearly being done by some type of animal. And I need you to understand, my Aunt Nessa was feeling good, but not good enough to travel all the way to the back side of her property and take a look at these holes. So she just decided to move on and forget about it. Three weeks later, Aunt Nessa's really starting to head downhill, and I hire a nurse to come up to her house and sit with her during the daytime. She's in the bed when she hears this nurse screaming for dear life. The woman comes running into the room, claiming that she saw this gigantic wolf walk across the backyard. Now, for the record, in Louisiana, we used to have red wolves here. But the thing that she described was a large black wolf on all fours, its head. But the thing she described was a large black wolf on all fours, so big that its head was at the base of the open patio umbrella. Now, I know that this had to happen because I was the one who was responsible for making sure that she actually had a nurse at her house to look out for her. This particular nurse, Susan, was scared out of her mind. She told me over and over in conversations that she did not feel comfortable being on the property. Now, Susan's fear eventually led to my Aunt Nessa being alone at the property for about two weeks. During that time, I would pass over when I could, but mostly in the evening, right after work. I could sit there, now listen to me, a part of me really, really regrets this, because there was only so much that I could do. When I got off work, I could come over, bring her dinner, or stop by and cook her dinner, sit there for a few hours and hang out with her, but then I had to get home to my family. And it was during this two week period when she started to share her encounters with me. Honestly, I'm thinking to myself, look man, Nessa's on these drugs, she's dying, she's gotta be hallucinating, right? She starts telling me about seeing the giant wolf walking around outside in the yard at night, and how I would come by her window, sniff, and then walk back off into the woods. Now, she told me this would happen every other night about 9.30 p.m. She would see it come walking out of the woods. It would come up to her window, sniff, and go back in. And understand, I wanted her to feel better. I wanted her to feel safe, especially being there alone. So I decided to spend the night. 7.30 comes, nothing. 8.30 rolls around, nothing. 9 o'clock, nothing. 9.15, absolutely nothing. 9.30, I am outside sitting on the porch waiting for whatever this is that she talked about to show up. But absolutely nothing happened. Now, you know how it is to doubt somebody and figure that they're not telling you the truth, right? But this was my Aunt Nessa, a woman I had known my whole life, somebody I had never known to really lie about anything. Combine that with the fact that Aunt Nessa was literally in the process of dying, struggling to walk, but at the same time, the one thing she kept with her, and she literally drugging around the house everywhere she went was a double barrel shotgun. For me, seeing this woman struggle to keep this shotgun by her side everywhere she went left me to believe that there had to be some kind of truth to what she was saying. When I was finally able to get another nurse to tend to her, things got a little bit better for her. She wasn't alone and she seemed as normal as a person facing their mortality could be. 
and getting her that nurse gave me a much needed break from the back and forth from my place to her place cooking at her house taking care of kids in my house going to work i mean it was endless don't get me wrong i'm not complaining because i'm grateful for the time i had to spend with my aunt nessa and you know the problem is don't get me wrong i'm grateful for every moment of time i got to spend with my aunt nessa and the craziest thing about a family member with cancer is that you never really know when the last moment is that you're going to have with them and i didn't realize that the next time i saw her was going to be the very last time that she and i would ever speak we were sitting on the porch talking and she said in her raspy voice son I i'm gonna die soon and i just want you to know that i really appreciate you and how you loved me and how you came here for me now i'm listening to her with a raspy tone tears welling up in her eyes and i'm saying to myself now i'm looking at her speaking to me with a raspy voice tears literally welling up in this little woman's eyes and i say what makes you think that this is going to be the last time i see you aunt nessa you got a lot of fighting you and i don't need you to stop fighting i need you to fight do you understand me you can't be giving up on me aunt nessa listen to me what this woman told me next was completely mind-boggling and to this day i do not know what to think of it. she went on to tell me that very same morning at 6 30 a.m she came outside just to sit on the porch and in her mind she was dying so she figured she might as well smoke one more cigarette and as she sat there lighter in her hand cigarette in the other bringing them together the sun was just starting to come up as she sat there in her rocking chair cigarette in her right hand lighter in her left the sun was just starting to rise and she starts to hear this sound coming from around the side of her house this snorting sound like an animal sniffing and snorting his nose moments later from around that corner comes this black wolf walking on two legs about 35 yards away from the porch it drops down on all fours slowly working its way over to the edge of the porch all the while sniffing the air aunt nessa told me she could hear this thing's stomach making these gurgling and growling sounds like it was empty as it got closer this is what scared the hell out of me she described this creature climbing up onto the porch, head low to the ground, sniffing and smelling, getting right, coming right up on her, smelling her legs, her waist, her arms, all the way up to the top of her head, looking at her, staring at her with these large yellow eyes, huge black pupils, 